for the last part of this tutorial, we'll be using image recognition to be able to instantiate our object into the scene. We'll also be going over occlusion in this part of the tutorial to add a little bit more interest to our scene. So let's first create a new scene and name this image recognition. I'll just drag it in here, delete the main camera, set as the active scene, create our AR session origin and our AR session. Next thing we'll do is we'll go to assets and right click in assets, create XR reference image library. This is where you would add the images that you would like for your camera to recognize. I am just using an image, a rendered image from a different program of the same model that I'm using. So in this, add image and drag the image as the texture. You can rename it however you like. We'll also have to specify the size and I'll just keep this at 0.1. As you can see, you can add multiple image images to this reference library. Now that we've created a reference image library, we could move this other scene and click on the AR session origin and add AR image tracked image manager. Under serialized library, we'll import our reference image library and we'll set the number of max moving images to one. Next, we'll create the prefab that will go here under the game object. We, luckily for us, we've already made a prefab in a previous tutorial. We can use this. However, if you don't want to have all these other object manipulation scripts on it, let's create a new prefab without all of these other extra scripts. So drag this into the scene. And since this is an instance of a prefab, we can remove these other components without affecting the original prefab. And let's change the name so that we don't get confused. Image object. But before we add this as our tracked image prefab, we have to make sure it's oriented in the right direction. Otherwise, the image is usually projected on the Z plane. So meaning that when we see this model in our real world environment, it'll be facing down, downwards and a negative axis. To fix this, we'll have to rotate this whole prefab 90 degrees. Then we'll create an empty and say rotated object reset these components make sure you're set to pivot and global make this a child and use this as the track image prefab after you make the image object a child of the rotated object you should drag this rotated rotated object into your assets and make it a prefab which i have already done and then once that's done you can delete this from your scene and add the prefab into the tracked image prefab slot. That way everything will run smoothly and there will be no problems. Here is the first round of the image tracking. And we see our image right above. And we see our model right above our image because we moved it slightly up thanks to the empty. And you can see the shadow too. The plane has captured a little bit of the shadow. Awesome. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add a little bit more to this. Occlusion is achieved by making a virtual mask of a real world object. So either parts of the virtual or real world object will be obscured by a mask. For our purposes, we're creating a portal like room where the outside is masked and you can only see through the door frame and see our model inside of a room. And this will all happen once we have the image up and tracking. So let me bring the rotated object back into the scene so we know what we're working with. 
So now for this, what we'll have to do, take this and duplicate and take this out of our rotated object for now. And now with this, it's no longer a prefab. So now we'll create 3D object and create a quad. Scale this down to 0.1. Let me put the game display back here so we can see what we're working with. Move this back 0.05. And that will be the back of the room. Now for the mask, we'll be importing another new material. Once you have your mask material imported, create material and we'll name this mask material. We'll do the same as the, with the shadow material, change to custom and mask. So for the mask, we'll take this quad, we'll turn it, push it down a bit. Let's do 0 0.06. And because a quad only exists on one side, this side is invisible. So we'll need to turn it around completely so that the outside is visible. So we can see the outside wall of the box. So on one side, we can see the inside. On one side, we can see the outside. But the trick is, this is where we'll put our mask. So we can apply the mask material here. So this will then block what we see of the model from this side. Can, from this side, we can no longer see the model and all we see is the environment instead. That is what we hope to do for the rest of the panels. So we're basically building a box with quads. There are other ways to do this, such as modeling with an external application or importing a modeling toolkit to Unity. But for this purpose of demonstration, I'll just use quads. Instead of just reconstructing the material over again, I'm just going to grab these quads that I already have and duplicate, make them bigger, and I'll rotate them. to separate, make the distinction clear, we'll have two groups. We'll name this and then we'll have another group and name this We'll set the inside walls off. On the outside walls, we'll drag on our masks. And when we turn on our inside walls, we can see the room inside. So we have our model, we have our lights, we have our walls, all under one object. Create another empty, say object occlusion. And we'll drag this as a child. We can delete this since we're not using that. And we'll make this a prefab. Now that this is a prefab, we can delete this and add it as our Track image manager. We're a little bit close. 
So we're inside the room, but now we can see the room. You can see that the object is hidden. There's a little bit of overhang from our sloppily constructed box, but if it was seamless, you wouldn't be able to see anything. And you can peer in and you can see the light and the party going on inside here. See what's hidden within this little box portal thing. So in this video, we learned about occlusion and how to use masks in AR to create interesting effects such as an AR portal where we get to look into a room and see our model. And that concludes this series. I hope you learned a lot.